Hey, this is Brian Jones from eLearning Art. Today I'm going to show you how to create a button set so that you could have multiple states in a button. And I'll just go ahead and show you the fact. See there? So if you like hovered over or clicked, it might change to that. And I, we're, I'm going to show you how to do it all in PowerPoint. Um, I'll do another version here where it's like kind of the whole box that's changing. Um, and here it is with a, uh, with a reflection in there as well. So it looks a little bit different. Anyways, this is done all in PowerPoint. I'll give you the source files so that you can uh, play along and open up the file and see how I did it. Um, in a previous version, I showed you how to build these icon boxes, so you can check out the video there. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how I might approach this. Um, now, one thing um, when you're creating these when you're creating these button sets, you need the sizes to be exactly the same. So you want to du duplicate, and you'll actually run into a few problems, and I'll and I'll show you what you can do. Uh, the cleanest way um, to do it is just to select this whole thing. It'll be exactly the way that you want it to look. You're going to copy it, and then you're going to paste it as a picture. And now, there we have it. And you see it has a little extra space. We want to get rid of that. Um, and that's because the, the reflection is there. Anytime you use these PowerPoint formatting things, things can get a little bit wonky. Um, but let's go ahead and format. We'll crop it. I'll drag that up there. And now we're good to go. And now I can just duplicate by holding control, dragging off of it. And now let's go ahead and format that. Go format, color, format it as gray. And these will be my two different versions. And now I can just go save as picture. And uh, we'll just call that uh, uh, test. And we'll do this file save as Pick, or sorry, right click, save as, we'll say test two. And let me just save that. And let me just show you what's going to happen. If I go to that folder and I look at test, it's 340 by 464. And this one is 340 by 464. So they match up exactly. And that's why I like that method. And then if you were to be toggling in a program, and now it, it would look perfect. Um, Let's go ahead and look at this again. Uh, let me get that out of the way. Now, if I remove the reflection and I just, I could actually do the format if I wanted things to remain vector, um, I can do that. Uh, I just, within this, I remove the the effect, which is the picture. And if I saved each one of these, you know, I'd have to recolor each object separately here. So make that gray and hide that text box really quickly and make this gray put the text back in and then make the outline gray and then if i save this as uh, if i saved it out as a picture actually i don't even i already saved it so i'll, I'll go ahead and, and show you um, what that looks like but the for no reflection you'll see we had 341 by 479 341 by 479 that worked out great and I'll show you one where there's like a problem. This is really annoying. So I just wanted to do this button. And if I duplicate this control and drag down, and then let's say I just make this color and let's say I want the background to be maybe a gray color as well. And if I save this as a picture, and let's just do ZZZ. And then we'll do this one, save as picture, and we'll go ZZZ2. Now, I think this one, it's because of the refl or the uh, shadow effect. So there's ZZZ, 280 by 280, and then 280 by 281. Now, that's going to be really annoying when I build these button sets. Um, and that'll happen a lot uh, when you're dealing with the formatting. Um, so... Uh, it just is, it won't line up perfectly when you put it into whatever program with the rollover effect, it's going to shift slightly. So again, you know, the way around that would be instead of doing it this way, you're going to copy and then you're going to paste it as a picture and then you'll duplicate that one. And now they'll be exactly the same size. So now let's go ahead and format color. We'll make it, you know, this one. And now if I said, Let's name this one, Sarah, save as picture. We'll go Y, Y, Y. And we'll go save as picture, Y, 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 2. 
Now let's go ahead and open those back up again and my button sets and I see the YYY. And we got 280 by 280 and 280 by 280. Anyways, that's a little trick. You know, you want to size it up to whatever the size you want it to be before saving it as the picture if you were dealing with a vector first because uh, it's it's not going to be... Uh, you can end up with it being pixelated or blurred a little bit. Um, so just make it big enough that when you save it as a picture and then uh, and then paste it or copy and then paste it as a picture that uh, you have it bigger than what you would need. Um, and that works really well. But, you know, you can do this in, in any graphic design program, but I just find that working in PowerPoint is such an easy thing to do. You just have to work around kind of this, uh, the odd effects that sometimes happen where you're off by pixel. And just make sure that you look at the pixels um, and you preview the image. Anyways, um, hope you find that useful. Uh, I do have a special bonus for you here at the end, so you can uh, you can go ahead and uh, download that or look at the show notes. Um, the, the download link will be there as well. Um, I also put another, a couple other lessons that I think you might find useful in here. Um, and if you made it this far, thank you so much. And I would really appreciate if you would just take the extra five seconds and like this video. And if you'd like to uh, receive more videos like this, you can subscribe to the channel. I do a ton of uh, PowerPoint design tutorials. Thanks so much. And you have a wonderful day.